Okay, and in the second part of the video, we're looking at tone and shading. We've drawn out our picture, or Bruce, well, in my case, of Bruce Lee using the grid method. Um, as you can see in the top left hand corner, you can see the image that we created using Photop and the grid. It could easily be done in Photoshop or any photo manipulation program, which allows you to put the grid over, over the subject. And then we drew the grid on the paper. And now, as you, as you can see, I'm working from, from the left to the right shading it in. I'm starting with a hair because it's just in the furthest corner. I'm also using this white sheet of paper here. It's like my best friend for this. This stops me smudging the work as I go across because I tend to rest my hand across the paper as I'm working. So you can see I'm putting a varied tone down. I put a light or middle tone down and then dark in certain areas and you can also you can see already that's creating the effect of light and shade in the hair. Low lights and highlights. And now I've done a darkish eyebrow and work it into the shadows on the eye, darker and then back to the eyebrow, constantly challenging the tone or the tonal range around it. Working into the eye, again a tone on the kind of iris of the eye, dark around the edges of it, darker into the pupil and then shading it all through. I'll come back to that later. Add a little bit of detail into the white of the eye there just to take it back a little bit. And the shadows down the side of the face. Now you've got to tend to look at the image very closely to see these shadows because when you first look at it uh, I think you'll sort of not notice them. I think well it's quite light but quite light isn't really good enough there is still tone there. If it's not pure white there's tone and I think you almost need to in your own mind exaggerate how dark that shadow is in order to get the full tonal range. As you can see I'm working from left to right on this picture shading in the images, almost one square at a time, working into the next one. And I'm adding a tone, but quite more often than not, I go back to it, I revisit it, and add more tone on top of it. Going into the nostrils now, and around the edge of the eye, uh, edge of the nose, uh, to uh, really define it. Okay, moving further across the page here, as you can see, still adding the tone, uh, middle tone first, and then darken it up. That's now going back to the hair there a little bit, just working my across automatically on the eyebrow there. As I add that detail, it sort of shows that the eyebrow is almost black, whereas the kind of the shadow near the eye is just a dark grey. Now working into the eye again, dark around the edges, middle tone throughout, and then just highlighting the bits that I need to with low lights of dark tone back into the eyebrow there just bring it across and again that emphasizes that the eyebrow is pretty much black but the shadow which looked really dark until we kind of really impose that black of the eyebrow on it and then it just becomes a, well, a tonal range back into the hair now I'm drawing in these shadow areas but then adding just flecks of line to create the effect of hair I'll go back and work into that again later on but for now just adding tone adding shadow around the hair shadow around the edge of the face, underneath that cheek there, underneath the eyes, so much on the backs of the eyes, and then down the side. There we go, really emphasizing the eyelid there, and the kind of where the tear ducts are, back down the face there, showing the shadow underneath the cheekbone. I take quite a bit of time doing the side of the chin there because, or the jawline rather, by the ear because there is a, on the picture a flash of white uh, or very lightness where the sun's hitting it. So I'm working quite hard to kind of keep that in balance. There underneath the neck there, giving tone all over, but really emphasizing underneath the chin as it has a shadow area. This is all about observing and shading. Starting in a sort of light tone and building up, getting darker and darker as I do so. Underneath the lip there, shadowing around the side of the mouth. When you're doing this, make sure you look almost as much as you shade. You look, look where the tones are, and it's shaded in. Looking for emphasis. As you're working through some bits, you'll think you've made a mistake. Like looking there, it looks like that black shadow underneath the nose gone off to the right looks wrong. But as I balance out the rest of the picture, it fades back and you don't notice it. Think about it as it, about the same as the tone around the eyes. That dark tone just above the eye there looks wrong until I put the darker tone of the eyebrow in. And suddenly it just looks like sh well, shading. 
top lip is 90% of the time darker than the bottom lip, so it's an easy bit of uh, detailing to put in to make something look more 3D. And on the, on the mouth there, I'm just drawing in some of the little kind of crack lines of the mouth. This really gives a nice uh, bit of realism to the picture. Look for these small details. At this point, that's what really counts. I added a tiny bit of stubble onto his top chin there. And now I get the, just a blocking the hair. Those close uh, with a good eye will notice my pencil is getting smaller and smaller. See how small it gets at the end of the picture. It started off as a brand new pencil. By the time I finish this uh, I've drawn off, it's, uh, it's a stub. <laughs> so just shading the hair in here. Going back, added more detail into those eyebrows to darken them even more. And now looking at them, they look so dark compared to the shadow underneath them that, well, you'd wonder why you were worried about that shadow looking dark. Here I'm trying to emphasize the direction of the hair to make it look more realistic. The hair doesn't just go straight down or straight, it kind of flows in different directions. And I can dot around the place now just where my eye catches and I look and notice something that I'm not happy with. Adding tiny bits of detail on the eyelids and eyelashes. The lids of hair. in areas that I think are a little bit too light. Just building it up slowly. It's, a, it's building from a foundation slowly building and building until you've got a picture that you're proud of. Now overall the shade on this took me over an hour to draw. Not probably right, yeah over an hour I'd say. Just, just over an hour. And uh, I'm pretty good at shading. I wouldn't say this was my best work ever, but at the same time it's a good solid piece of work. So if it took me an hour, it should be taking you hmm, a good two hours. So take your time and do it well. Look at that, going back over the hair really pays off now. Just adding darkness into certain areas really brings the hair alive. Really glad I might went back and did that. Really gives it depth. The smaller pencil's gone. <laughs> it really is tiny now. Okay, just got a rubber out now, finishing off. Just taking a few of the scruffy edges off that I wasn't happy about. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So over to you now. Good luck.